four, no. five, <laughs> four. <laughs> and we're live! Oh my god. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the latest episode, episode 20. That's two zero. So five more until we rejoice at how bloody amazing we all are. And uh, yeah, uh, I forgot who, who I we? am. I don't know who I am. I forgot. So why don't you guys start? Well, uh, welcome to another episode of the Crafty Boys. I'm Alan. I'm in uh, Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, just north of me, uh, with the green wall behind him in uh, wherever the hell he is, uh, introduce yourself, Dave. <laughs> Coax Valley, that's where this is. Okay. And yes, it's uh, it's not much north of you. Still on the island. Yep. All right. And over uh, to the east in, on the mainland, uh, we have with the dark foreboding background is... Oh, uh, that would be me. And um, I'm Locke and I'm here in Vancouver. <laughs> Sorry, the dark and foreboding background? Well, I don't the know. Dark and foreboding kind of... background of doom. Did you ever watch that British show with like the the people hurtling through space? What was that? What was that? Show? Red Dwarf, and there was the the computer guy, and it was just like this this severed head that was floating in like the, oh, with, like uh, a black background. That's what Lockhart looks like. He looks like he's uh, a uh, Oh my god! Talk what with is, a British what is... accent. Talk with a British accent. Sherry? No, it was a female no. name. Holly. No, no, it was Holly. Was ho- no, no. Holly was a hologram, dude. No, no, no. That that was uh, a completely different character. But no, there, no, that... no, no, no. there were there was more than one ship's computer. True. The... There was the male, and then became female after yeah. sex. So I'm thinking it was the male. So right. talk Good. talk Thank with you. a British accent. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. Yeah, you could. Talk talk like a Cockney boot black. Let's go. Do it. I have no I, idea what you just I, I, said. It was awesome. I don't know fuck to cook me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say what I thought that, sm- that smelled <laughs> like. Apparently it smelled. Yeah. Wow. This internet's so advanced. <laughs> so boys. Boys and boys and boys. I We have some really kind of cool stuff we want to talk about. Um, but do. I... I you were providing the links earlier, so yeah, it's actually is, it actually is very cool. Um, so, first of all, what beer are we drinking, Dave? We are drinking peach cream ale. Who's it by? Sounds, sounds kind of weird. It's from the Tin Whistle Brewing Company, who is in... The South Okanagan, apparently. Let's see if they get a little more specific here. Ah, uh, Penticton. There you go. Cool. So it says it says on the bottle, and I bought it. I got it here. Uh, a taste of the South Okanagan, the flavor and aroma of fresh peaches, light, crisp, and very f- refreshing. Which is actually really good on a day like today, because uh, it was very hot. Yeah, it's today. hot out. It's summer. It's July second, and uh, we've been going through a heat wave for like the last like three thousand years. It seems like, and uh, I, I'm I'm into some refreshment. Uh, Shane, you got the beer, didn't you? No, I didn't get the beer. And you know why I didn't get the beer this week? Because the BC liquor store has chosen to have this beer in their stock, like to be actually ordered and put into their stores. But nowhere near where I am. Nowhere. I did go once to to the the UBC location. Was not there. Just like the beer that Dave chose before. So it seems to me that every time Dave chooses a beer, it's always difficult for Vancouverites to find. And And I know this is true because of the two beers Dave has chosen... Neither myself or Locke have been able to get it. So screw you, Dave, and your choices of beer. And you know what's very interesting? Just to continue this story, I actually fucking phoned Shane when I was standing in the liquor store. And I said, hey, 
I'm looking at this. What do you think? <laughs> I knew you were going to bring that up. I knew you were going to bring that up. You had the power of veto, and you didn't take advantage of it, so that's your fault. Yeah, it is totally my fault. It's, it's mainly because I should have gone that day to get it, but I waited stupidly. So, I'm going to let you guys talk about the beer. All right. Because well, I, I don't have it. I have no opinion. As far as I, as I know, it tastes like piss. <laughs> Well, I hope it doesn't. Um, so do the pour. Do your pour. Well, uh, let's uh, let um, let Dave uh, spearhead this one since it was his choice this week. Bear, uh, Dave, go ahead. Do your pour. All right. I'm I'm pour. Lift up your glass. We can't yeah. see it. There we go. Well, it's certainly peach colored. Wow. Well, Take, hold it up. Hold, let me let me uh, let me focus on you there. Hold it up a bit higher. There we go. Mm. Wow, looks like that, champagne. Not a bad color. It's not a bad color. No, it's and the head's pretty mild. Is that just how you pour it, or? I think mostly, yeah, because I was trying to pour it carefully, right? So. Mm. All right. Well, yeah. let me let me try mine. See if I can get a bit of a better head here. All right. Trying to get a head. I like head. That's a little more than the the other pour, but it is kind of it is sort of weak, isn't it? It is a weak head, yeah. And I was trying to get a bit of a head there, so. Locke, why don't you pour your beer? Just because I I what did you, what did you get, by the way? Right. So, um, <clears throat> didn't see anything. I, you know, I thought I would see if I could find something that was approximate. Um, I don't think I quite made it to approximate, but uh, I did find something that was interesting. Parallel 49's apricotta puss. So apricots, not the same as peaches. Um, you can see it's in the ballpark, though. Yeah. Wow, that's cool. Oh, I saw the label for that in the store yesterday. Yeah, that's and so, so what this thing is, or what it says it is, is an apricot sour saison. Interesting. And given that we have had some very sour beers on this show, I've got to say this is this is mildly sour. Sort of like a sort of seems like a it's a little bit like if you had a hoe garden that you didn't need to put a lemon in. Mm. Like okay. it comes with lemon, only it's apricot. So it's pre-lemonized. Yeah, and pretty pre-lemonized. Whip beerish. Hmm. I I'm I like this one. Um, the peach. Uh, it smells full on like peaches. Yeah, you know I'm not a big fan of peaches as it is. Like you know. Huh? I, I would never actually go to the store and buy a peach and just eat it. It's just never wow. really appealed to me. Um, I buy a whole box. For them to ripen properly, though. Yeah. It's it's an interesting combination, the the beer and uh, it just it just seems a little bit light to me. Um, it could use a little bit more carbonation, I think. Dave, what what do you think? Well, I don't like huge carbonation, so that part doesn't bug me. It you know, is, I, it's light. It's very light, isn't it? It is. Um, for a beer this light, I would expect a great, a greater deal of carbonation than what what you're getting here. Um, for hmm. you know, this is the kind of carbonation I would expect to find in a stout. You know, not very much at all, and hmm. um, so this is like. Stout level carbonation in a light peach tasting beer. It just doesn't mix well to me. Hmm. All right, so Shane, what did you get? Nothing. Oh. Okay. You see, I ran out of beer a couple of days ago because a certain guy was over here and we drank my beer. So I haven't had a chance to get any beer. Was today. that guy Lockhart? No. No, never. 
<laughs> Actually, that's not entirely true. Uh, Locke, well, the thing is, is that uh, this past weekend, now this is a story, oh my god. So, Locke and I are hanging out Saturday, having a good time, or no, sorry, Sunday, and uh, about 24 hours before this hangout period, uh, Allison said, hey, Shane, is it supposed to be wet under the sink? And I said, no, that's a bit unusual. So while Locke and was I that, are hanging out, was that up, some sort of secret sex talk I, code I, thing? I wish. I Does wish. She, did she look at you sly and say, "Shane, is this supposed to be wet under the sink?" Let me get my plumber out. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, I did something really stupid on Sunday while I'm hanging out with Locke. I decided it, it popped into my mind that this. Question had been uttered the day before, so I, I, while I was in the kitchen going, oh, I, 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 I don't know what I was doing in the kitchen, I've forgotten, and uh, but I thought, oh right, Allison said it was wet under the sink, and so I was stupid and took a leak. I took a leak. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why it's so wet. <laughs> so I took a look under the sink, and it was worse than I thought. I mean, I thought maybe just a little condensation because, you know, the weather is so crazy and maybe, you know, it was just there was some condensation of the pipe. No, it was a full-on leak and so I turned the water on and out came some water and I thought uh, from the drain and I thought, oh, crap. So, long story short, basically we had a garburator you know, under our sink uh, and it, it apparently it was the same garburator when it was first installed as in 1994. And it finally died. So uh, I took the, the, the pipes apart a little bit just to kind of get a good idea of sort of what was going on. And uh, there were teeth from the garburetor in the water trap at the bottom. So I realized that it was really gone. So basically that went from, I don't know, mid-afternoon, I guess, on Sunday until about noon on Monday um, and about four or five trips to um, the uh, the place, the, the Home Depot. And, uh, yeah, so uh, partway through Monday, it uh, was all fixed and working well, and I had removed the garburetor and put the stuff back in. And, uh, and that's basically a story to say that Locke drank my last beer on Sunday, and I just didn't think about it with Canada Day and everything. It just totally didn't pop into my mind that, hey, maybe I should go get the beer for the thing. And then we changed the day to record, and then blah, 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 blah. And it's all Dave's fault. Way to go, Dave. <clears throat> it always is. <laughs> you know, I that's don't probably know. the worst attempt at buck passing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> it, it totally was. It is the, the worst uh, <laughs> way to pass the buck. But ultimately, anyway, that Canada Day, and it totally just didn't pop into my mind to go and buy the beer. Uh but I did go try to get it last week, and it didn't work out. And... And just, to, and just to finish this story off, the last beer of Shane's that I drank was the tail end of the, one of the two growlers that I had bought and brought over to oh. earlier in the week. <laughs> now, it's interesting that you talk about those growlers. So you do have to finish them off kind of quickly because the beer tends to go flat, right? Oh, I've never tried not drinking them off real quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, did we lose our host? <laughs> did, he, did he abandon us? No, I had to go and get the bottle that Locke drank from. Uh, I was actually not thinking about the growler. The growlers, you know, those those are fair game. Uh, it was the uh, agave and lemon marachi. Oh, you mean, oh, you mean the... the, the Jonathan Narvi brought the, the Jonathan Narvi beer uh, that showed up the other day. The book just and keeps going everywhere. I know. So it's basically all Jonathan Narvi's fault. So Jonathan Narvi, if you're watching this, it's your fault. You're Jonathan Narvi. <laughs> yeah, to Jonathan Narvi. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Um, I just I just had to bring that beer up because it's actually a very strange beer. Uh, yeah, it well, was of course, it's a strange. Yeah. Beer. So, what did, so, what did you think about this this beer lock? I mean, I, yeah, I didn't. I mean, I was, um, 
for 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 a summer beverage, um, and that I take it to be, you know, like it's a big marketing on that. I think is is the right impression. Yeah. Um, yeah. I thought it was tasty. Like it actually had some. It was sort of flavorful. What I would say it reminded me of, in an odd, odd way, is it was sort of like, and when I say this, you're going to want to slap me, because it sounds ungodly, but but it was sort of like a cross between, like um, like an innocent gun, and like a Corona or something like that. Yeah, it's very, very strange. I mean, I would never have pictured like, those two things going together. Like it's very light beer, like in, in you know, in a Corona, you know, Red Dragon kind of, you know, like it's pickled yeah. water, right? But with some extra stuff in there that's you know bringing in a little bit more um, of a you know of a a flavor to it or whatever. And yeah, it reminded me a little bit of Innocent Gun. I, I, I don't know, it, it had that sort of like, you know, the sort of the slightly funky, I don't know, anyway. If it tasted funky, it was because it was in a clear bottle. Well, the other thing, too, is that the beer was imported from Turkey uh, by some importing company in, out of uh, Vancouver, so... Wait a minute, uh, so, so what, what that is, is um, a lime and agave cerveza from Turkey? Yep. Wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that's what it says on the bottle. Uh, it is from the uh, brewed and bottled by Andalo Efes Brewery, Turkey. Imported by blah, 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 International Corp, Vancouver, BC. I kind of wonder how much that cost. I got a, I got uh, a it. Was on, it was actually on sale. A Narvi tried it. They were they were giving out samples, like you know, little cup samples at the store, and, the, and he was like, "This is actually not bad," and it, it was cheap, so he bought it. I've got a couple of comments on Turkish beverages. Um, I went to Istanbul uh, a couple of years back. You know that used to be called Constantinople, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Istanbul, Constantinople. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I, I could have called it Constantinople, and you know. I was trying to make a funny. I'm sorry. Anyway. Anyway. Um, two two observations. One, for a place that's, you know, a secular state, but with a, you know, the, the party in, in power when I was visiting was the sort of, the, you know, Islamic religious party. Um, it was easier to obtain booze at weird hours the, like in Istanbul, than it is here in Vancouver, or Calgary for that matter. Which to me was just sort of like, wow, really? Wow, okay. <laughs> um, the second observation: um, their their sodas, like pop, tin pop, so much better. Like like I was very impressed. So they've got this this thing called a um, uh, a peach nectar or whatever. Which, which is sort of like, it's sort of like a juice, but, but maybe a little bit more sugar. Um, but tangy and really good. And then they had uh, this, this cherry beverage that was like, uh, you know, it was like drinking a cherry pie, you know what I mean? It was really, like, the quality of, of soda, or, you know, like pop drinks, um, yeah. Really good, top notch. I never had any beer while I was there. Oddly enough, I, I generally drank wine. But wow. So I want to hear more about what you guys think about uh, this tin whistle entry into our that's been been we've bestowed upon our our educated beer drinkingness, imparting wisdom and. Well, I'll, I'll I'll let Dave have the final word on it because it was his choice this week. I, I'm not a fan of it. I'll never buy it again. Um, it does taste like peaches. It does have a peach aroma. I think it, it it delivers what it says it's going to deliver. But to me, it's just it's just too flat and uh, too um, too light. Um, I think they could have done a lot more with it. Um, 
It kind of reminds me a bit of the uh, disappointment that we had with the maple bacon beer a couple weeks ago that we had that didn't taste like maple or bacon and lacked any kind of uh, body or flavor or anything. Um, yeah, uh, I I'll never buy it again. Dave? Hmm. Well, I wouldn't uh, would be so hard on it, but uh, I don't know if I would get it again either. Um, it smells better, I think, than it tastes in the end. Mm. Mm. Having said that, it's not bad. And I think it is kind of nice if you're looking for something for a day like today that's lighter. You know, because it doesn't kick you in the teeth. Well... I'm actually going to... I think it's my turn to pick a beer next week. And mm. I have one uh, that I think is equally light. Kind of got a fruity flavor. And I think it should be accessible to everybody. And um, I'm not a big fan of this brewery. Uh, but this one seems to be a winner. And I actually really like it. So uh, I'm going to suggest that next week... We do Vancouver Island Brewery's Black Betty. It's a blackberry saison. Hmm. Interesting. This is actually it, kind of cool. It comes in six packs, six pack cans. So don't go looking for it in the uh, in the uh, bomber bottles. Uh, you, you, it'll it'll come in a six pack. But uh, yeah, I've I've had it and it's actually it's really refreshing. I, I really enjoy it. Okay. So for next week. For next week. All right, we'll give that a try. Now, um, so aside from the apricotopus, I got one of the parallel forty nine beer, um, just because I was, you know, I'm a two beer guy at least. Um, we can. I, I'm, I'm about to drink this for the first time. We can Ooh, talk about it tonight if you want. What is this? Or, yeah, yeah. Or we can wait. And actually, I think we, we should wait on that one. Because I think the more pressing topic for tonight is this cool discovery that Alan has brought to my attention. But, uh, sorry, keep going. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, um, just to finish up what I was going to say, what it is is a corn IPA. Go on with uh, Alan and discovery. Okay. So... One thing uh, craft brew, uh, craft beer lovers like us we, we enjoy is getting um, uh, growlers. You go down to the local uh, uh, microbrew, buy a growler for you know a few bucks, and then you can fill it at 64 ounces of beer for about 10 bucks, depending on where you go. Um, it's it's uh, good for the environment. It's cost efficient. Um, the only thing that sucks about it. If you're buying it by yourself, 64 ounces is a lot to have in a single serving. Um, so how do you keep the beer fresh? As soon as you open it, it starts to go flat. Uh, if you're having a party, that's fine. You know, everybody's going to down it. But if you just want to have some beer and you want to maybe have a glass a day over, you know, the next few days, it's going to be flat by the time you get to day two or three. So some people, some companies have been coming up with ideas to make beer and growlers go longer. Um, and some of them have come up with tapping systems that use CO2 cartridges to keep your beer pressurized. So there is a, a couple companies in, in uh, particular. So there's the Growl Tap, which is um, just a, an add-on that you put on top of your existing glass growler. It's just a cap. It's got a, um, uh, a CO2 cartridge and then a hose that goes to it to a spigot and you can actually press it and it actually draws out the beer out of your, out of your growler and into your glass. Then there's some other companies. Um, there is one in Winnipeg which actually puts together a really nice system. It's, it's a, a stainless steel growler that looks like a mini keg and it's, it's got the same kind of CO2 cartridge on it um, but it's it's um, it's a lot more personalized. You can put on your your own words on it or a logo or or something like that. 
Um, you can get them in 64 ounce and 128 ounce varieties. Um, the, the 64 ounce is $120, which is uh, interesting. Uh, Shane, can you include the uh, the links to these on on our uh, you know below down? Uh, yeah, I'll throw. I'm just actually doing that right now. I'm oh, you're doing that right now. Awesome. Yeah. Interestingly, uh, uh, the growl tap is. Um, I think it's about 45 bucks US. You buy it from the states. I think it costs 20 bucks to ship it. So, uh, so you're looking at about 65 dollars US. Then there is a company. I, I guess this company's down in the states as well. Uh, it should be important to note that these are fairly new inventions, and some of these aren't exactly available yet. This one here, the UKEG, um, is from Growler Works from Portland, Oregon. It's not available yet until October of, of 2015, but it's $129 for the 64-ounce uh, version, and it's a stainless steel carafe with brass tap, a brass handle, and again, a CO2 cartridge system that's hidden um, that um, keeps your beer nicely pressurized so that, you know, Two weeks later, if you want to draw a beer out of this thing, there isn't very many people that would allow beer to last that long. But uh, if you did, uh, out of the products that that that, that are um, that you pulled together here, Alan, this yeah. is easily one of the best looking. This oh. is a fractured thing. Now, I, I mean, it sort of depends on your lifestyle. Uh, it wouldn't necessarily go with you know every kitchen, but if you're into nice stuff. This is nice. It looks. I mean, it would. It looks really good. I mean, it's almost better than the beer that would be inside of it. Almost. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it looks really, really classy. I mean, it would fit almost any kind of kitchen decor or you know. Yeah, I mean, it's that. actually. It kind of. It would spruce up my place. I mean, really, when you think about it, it's like. God, that looks so good. I mean, I want to throw out my dishwasher. I want to throw out the fridge. I want to, I wanted to get everything stainless steel just to match this one growler. Yeah. I'm all about I I love it. I think it's great. So, I mean, if 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 you have the money, I mean, 129 bucks US and it's not available until October. Um man, uh what a perfect gift for somebody. Now, if you want to if you want to keep it in the country, um, you know, in Canada, if you're if you're watching us in Canada, then the then the uh, uh, this uh, one here um, from North City Growlers is in Winnipeg, so you're keeping it in in the country, and this is still a very nice system, and it costs a little bit less. It's 120 dollars for the 60 pardon me, the 64 ounce uh, version. Um, you know, I'd be very happy with this, but that UKEG for an extra nine bucks is awfully nice. The problem, the problem with me owning one of those things is that, in the context of the rest of my lifestyle, it'd be all ghetto fabulous. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> ghetto fabulous. But you know, it, it, it's I don't really get growlers all that much. You know, if I do, if I'm having a party, but let's face it, I got three kids. You know, I, I don't go out a lot. I'm, I, I pretty much have no life. Um, it's pretty sad and pathetic. And, um, you know, I'd love to buy growlers more, but, you know, who am I going to share them with? Um, certainly not my kids because society frowns on that. Um, but anyway, I would love to have a growler, keep it in my fridge, and, you know, just pour myself a beer every once in a while if I wanted to do that. And these these inventions allow me to do that. It's great for family guys who aren't going to um, be socializing every single night but want to uh, save a little bit of cash uh, by buying growlers instead of going to and buying six packs or whatever. Right, right, totally. And it makes it do, a little bit more accessible. And if you do have the kitchen to support it, then it's, then it's an awesome feature. To, Come on back to my place. You won't believe the thing that I, I just found to, mm -hmm. to you know, 
dispense beer from from crawlers. It's the coolest looking thing ever. You totally got to come back to my place. <laughs> Ladies, um, <laughs> that is actually kind of. <laughs> Instead of having, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta step off camera again. I'm gonna go get one. You're gonna get what? You're gonna, gonna go get, get a lady one right now. I, You're gonna get a yes, lady. I'm. Gonna, that's right. <laughs> Just, <laughs> uh, yes, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. The ladies are going to just flock to me because I have a new growler. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> is is, well, is it going to replace con the the convertible sports car? Now people are going to flock to you because you've got one of these growlers. It's a lot right. cheaper than a convertible. Can that come in fire engine red? No. All right. Now one thing I want to a lot of these growlers like this UKEG, they do come in a larger 128 ounce variety. Can you buy a growler that's 128 ounces? I'm not aware of any place that sells a growler that big. Ounce, sorry, growler. Yeah. What is that, the Texas Mixi Mickey of growlers or something? What, what is that? I don't that? know. Well, that's, no idea. sounds like a proper keg. What that is. How, I'm sorry, I, I don't know. How many, how many ounces are in a, are in a keg? <sighs> I don't know. I, 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 like, I, uh, no. Standard size I'm, I'm cake. Okay. I just sent you guys. What, what, what the, is it? I just sent you guys the link uh, to Growler Works for their okay. full. Sorry, I'm not doing math well, very well right now. What? So how big is this thing? One one keg is 1984 U.S. fluid ounces. A growler is 64 ounces. Okay, so oh right, right. Okay, okay. So so yeah, maybe maybe I got confused about what ounces are there. I so grew up, but, but these I companies grew up. sell 128 ounce varieties, so which is like twice, <sighs> you know, twice the what a regular growler is. So basically, I guess it's like two growlers. See, so I guess the problem, the problem with that is you, you go to get your growler filled. And don't they usually have the, the cylinder where they stick it in and they dance around and do that thing? I mean, if it's too big, how do they make it work? That's true. Hey, yeah, that's a good point. So stick with the uh, stick with the sixty four ounce ones. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm not saying I'm against the idea of a double growler. I mean, look, as a guy who can hold big bombs and make them look as if they were regular sized bottles in my hand. Um, the idea of an extra large growler sounds fun. Um, but I question how it's going to get filled. That's a good point. I never really thought about that. Alrighty then. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told. Um, Back to you in studio, Shane. Why, thank you. Uh, well, my uh, just as I was about to say something, my alarm went off, uh, telling us that we've actually hit the limit for our time for the show this week. Aww. <laughs> I know, unless you want to press onward, we can. I'm just saying that, you know, the timer went off, and Dave hasn't said anything for at least 12 minutes. Um... He just laughs. That's all he does. Every so often he just goes... <laughs> it's just funny that Shane actually can put an ear to it. <laughs> I was timing myself to see how far I could go without uh, saying anything or anybody noticing. Well, you see, I had, I had, I had two timers running on my screen. I have, I have the countdown timer for the length of show. And then I just happened to put up another timer going, Dave has not spoken for, and I let it run. So it was 12, yeah, 12 minutes, 18 seconds. Congratulations, sir. You've hit a wow. record. Nice. Um, nice. Any final words, gentlemen? <laughs> any final words for the week? What uh, we've had, we've actually, uh, that's it. We're done. <laughs> um, no, no, we've actually touched on... We've, We've touched on a couple beers, uh, actually three beers, I think, uh, to my account. Um, the one thing I will point out about Tin Whistle's uh, Peach Cream Ale 
is that Tin Whistle doesn't seem to have a website. And I tried desperately what? to find a link to their actual beer. I can't find it. Uh, but if you can, do let me know. Um, but uh, it seems that their Facebook page is their main website to go to. Um, which, of course, doesn't really have any photos of their beer. Hmm. So, which is a bit weird. So I grabbed a picture of a label off the internet uh, just so people took, taking pictures of the bottle wouldn't get mad at me. Um, yeah, but any final words for any uh, any of the beers today? We've talked about uh, Peach Cream Ale. We've also touched on uh, the one we're going to talk about next week, which is the Octopus. No, 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 no. If we're if we're doing if we're doing something next week, we're doing the corn hops. The yeah. corn hops, right? Of course, right, right. Corn hops. Cool. And uh, and Dave, uh, you don't get to pick a beer this week, but um, but if people want to find you, Dave, online. Where are they going to look? I well, that's a good question. That's your good if answer. If they were so inclined to look, <laughs> uh, you could find me at, on Twitter's. Um, I have a handle: the fool, uh, the p h u l e. So that's where nice. I'm at. One of the better Twitter handles out there. What about you, Alan? Where are people going to find you if they want to find you online? Uh, they can just look around. I'm there. <laughs> no, they can go on the Twitter and, uh, you know, do a shout-out thing and say, Hey, Alan, you here? It's uh, at Alan M. Ford. Ford like the car. There's millions of them out there. Just have a look out your window. And you'll probably see one driving by, and you can know how to spell it. And what about you, Locke? Where will people find you if they want to search for you online? In your globe-trotting adventures. Yeah, forget my globe-trotting adventures. Um, YouTube search Breakfast of Rock Central and click on what looks like the badass pancake breakfast of the century. <laughs> What? Wow. What do you mean, you what? You guys know that Locke is an awarded, famous documentary filmmaker? Wow, dead I silence. Dead silence. silence. You guys haven't even seen it, have you? You haven't done that. You haven't searched it. I didn't. I, I knew that you were a documentary filmmaker. I didn't know you were award winning. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't know that I was award-winning either, but I am, and I'm sure that one day I'll find out. What what, what award is that? The, the being awesome award. Is, 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 it a pla- award yeah? is it a is it a placemat from Denny's? No, 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 no. It's better than that. It's it's the fucking A award. It's it's only it's only granted to certain individuals and only in the strictest of confidence. I I I can't say more without breaching the. Did you, have, did you have to go to a, like a televised award show for that? It's like, and the winner is no, but I did need to introduce my film in front of uh, a like almost round the block, almost around the block um, lineup to get into the show. So, oh, yeah. cool! All right, cool. Hey, fantastic! Right on. Very cool. So Breakfast at Rock Central, and I just Googled it on YouTube, and people have been posting clips from the documentary online. So uh, there you go. You're getting some free stuff off of YouTube. Let's send some cease and desist letters. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for checking us out. We will see you next week at the same time, same bat channel, and all that kind of jazz. Same thing. There you go.